Committee of the Georgia Senate. I'm going to ask Senator Bo Hatchett if he would open us with a word of prayer. What, what uh, number is that? Number 12. 12. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here today. Uh, please give us the wisdom and guidance to speak um, what you need to hear for the good people of the state of Georgia and uh, continue to let us lead with uh, you in mind. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we have a, a number of items we need to cover this morning. The first one is the adoption of the rules. I call the uh, committee attention to your packet. You should see a copy of the rules. These are the same rules that were a part of the committee in the last session. There have been no changes. Is it, I have a motion from Senator Robertson, second from Senator Kennedy. All those in favor of the uplifted hand. Thank you very much. So the rules are adopted. The second order of business is to acknowledge the creation of our caucuses. We've requested a, a number of uh, uh, caucuses provide information to the committee. I'd like to read the names of the caucuses that have submitted applications. The Georgia-Japan Legislative Caucus, the Japan Caucus, the Sportsman's Caucus, the, joint, uh, the Senate Joint Mental Health Policy Caucus, the Senate DeKalb County Delegation Caucus, the Senate American Korean Friendship Caucus, the Women's Legislative Caucus, the Working Families Legislative Caucus, the Senior Statesman's Caucus, the Aviation Caucus, the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus. Um, those are the ones that have current applications on file with the ethics committee there are other caucuses that i'll follow up with later but at this point i'd like to uh, call for a motion to accept the applications from the caucuses that i have uh, shared with the committee hey, i have a, a motion from the minority leader thank you much and a second from senator um the pro tem, President Pro Tem, Senator Kennedy. All those in favor of accepting the caucus applications, indicate with the uplifted hand. Thank you very much. We'll likely come back next week, and if there are others, we'll we'll address those at that time. We're going to move on now. Uh, we've got uh, three items of business. First, I'd like a, uh, an update from the Secretary of State's office. We're present, uh, pleased to have this morning with us Mr. Sam Teasley. Uh, Sam, if you'll come and share with us an, an update from the Secretary of State. Take about 10 minutes, and then we'll do some questions. Here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't know that I'll take 10 minutes, um, but I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. It's good to see you. I wanted to give you a brief update on the 2022 election and see if you had any questions for our office. <clears throat> this, uh, this coming into this past election, we were facing expectations and various forms of disaster from different groups. There were some who were expecting long lines, frustrated voters, and voters being turned away from the polls for frivolous reasons. And yet there were others who were ex expecting inexplicable machine malfunctions or breakdowns in the election processes and procedures. But instead, Georgia's general election in 2022, which began on October the 17th and finished on November the 8th, saw a voter turnout that broke several different records in very short wait times. Georgia has engaged, has an engaged and informed electorate that is very happy with our election process and most importantly, trusts the outcomes of our elections. Georgia broke early voting record turnouts from the first day of early voting through election day. When you compare the 22, what, what I'll do for comparison is comparing the 2022 midterm with the 2018 midterm, which because those voting patterns tend to be more similar as opposed to a presidential election year. As an overview, in 2018, the early, early in-person voting was 1.89 million voters. In 2022, there was 2,289,951. So that's a 17.5% increase in early in-person voting from the most recent midterm. It should be noted that Georgians prefer to vote in person when there is no pandemic. 248,281 absentee by mail ballots were accepted in 2022, as opposed to just under 1.3 million in 2020, which is obviously a pretty significant drop, an 81% drop from the presidential election year during the pandemic but in line with the approximately 259 absentee ballots by mail cast in 2018. 
In other words, we return to more normal levels of absentee voting. <clears throat> By the numbers in 2022, we had 6,961,501 6, active voters. We had a turnout of 3,962,030, which is a turnout of 56.9%. As I mentioned earlier, there are 248,281 absentee ballots accepted, 2,289,951 early in person, the rest of, and then the rest of those voted on election day. We had a pilot program with upgrading to the electronic poll books that will significantly increase the speed at which people can check in during advanced voting. The pilot was in 18 counties and it went extremely well. The technology will be rolled out statewide in 2024. And as an aside, Cobb County, the county in which I reside, was one of these polling lo was one of these counties that tested that. And I've always made a point to vote in person in Cobb County because the I walk into my precinct on election day and there's no wait. Whereas oftentimes in early voting, because of the, the vast number of people in Cobb County who enjoy early voting, there's usually a bit of a wait. And I'm like, well, I'll just wait until election day. And the Cobb County does a great job of putting on their on their website, expected wait times at different polling locations, and certainly during early voting. And so, I one day I was in the east. I was in East Cobb, and I opened up their website, and sure enough, it said zero wait time. And I said, I'll believe that when I see it. I showed up, and sure enough, there was no wait time. I went and early voted um, because, again, Cobb County was test piloting this program, which allowed the check-in process to move more quickly and allowed voters to um, take advantage of that. In, we also conducted a risk limiting audit as required by HB 316 on a general election contest. We chose the Secretary of State's contest, which confirmed that the machines are working properly. The, the risk limiting audit um, threshold was, was met. We also offered a security tool to county election officials that would help quickly notify us about non-life-threatening emergencies at polling locations. Um, and then in a study that was conducted by MIT's Election Data and Science Lab in conjunction with the School of Public and International Affairs at UGA, a poll revealed that 98.9% .9 of voters reported no issues casting a ballot, 953 reported a wait time of less than 30 minutes, 97% of voters rated their interaction with poll workers as good or excellent. Please thank your poll workers. 99% of voters felt safe at, in their polling location, 89.7% percent of voters felt feel confident in the election process. 77.4 percent of voters felt that SB 202 didn't impact their ability to cast a ballot with 14.8 percent saying SB 202 made it easier to cast a ballot. Mm -hmm. And 90.7 percent of voters feel that it is easy to vote in Georgia, according to that poll by MIT and UGA. Go dogs. Um, I would be happy to answer any questions about about the data or anything our office can do to better assist you. Questions from the committee? Overall, Mr. Teasley, how would you evaluate the 2022 experience? It was important, uh, our office felt it was important that certainly voters be able to go through the process quickly. Uh, one, of the, one of the improvements in SB 202 is requir requiring counties to keep wait times at an hour or less. We saw counties meet that threshold with the possible exception of the first day of early voting. There's just people are rushing to, to go do that. Uh, and so once that was cleared the first time of early voting, and of course that part of SB 202 uh, is, um, applies to in-person voting. Um, so the speed, of, the speed of which voters were able to vote was improved and voters appreciated that experience. Also, it was important, obviously, coming into the 2022 election, that voters be confident that the election results, that they could trust the election results. And overwhelmingly, we, we saw that voters trusted the election results. So speed and confidence are very important for, for our voters. Thank you. Uh, Senator Robertson. It is pronounced Teasley, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Teasley. Um, I was, after the 2020 election, I was, I was in that uh, group of individuals that had to go around to all the, uh, all the groups that I represent uh, and explain to them how the equipment had worked properly. Yes, sir. And after multiple investigations done by myself and by, by your office, um, 
could not find any evidence of, of mass breakdowns anywhere in the equipment, the scanning and, and this thing. During this recent uh, election, did we run into any issues related to that other than what I hear from the, the, the poll workers that you're absolutely right, that we, we should thank more, and, and the registrars in the counties that are responsible for running these elections as far as setup? Because I know it's, it can be very cumbersome in storage space and all this, but did we did we get many complaints about equipment malfunctions or failures? We heard very few, um, almost almost none. Um, and and thank you for that your your remarks. I know that I also, as you might guess, spent a fair amount of my time after 2020 explaining that yes, we can trust the results. And so one of the things that I would often go through with with a voter um, who would express concern is I would say we know that the machines counted correctly and here's how we know that they did it wasn't even opinion the, w the reason we know that they counted correctly is because the election results that were reported on election night in 2020 matched so the voters were prompted to, they had their their ballot was now a, a paper ballot they were prompted in most in almost most cases in most cases to review their ballot before they put it in the scanner so the and we heard of zero cases where the voter said, hey, I touched the screen for candidate A and it showed up on my ballot as candidate B. Even if it had, they could have gone back and gotten it corrected. But we heard of no reports of that. So it was right on the piece of paper. They put it in the scanner. Election night reporting um, showed one total. We then did a risk limiting audit and a, and a recount, essentially showing all three times were the same numbers. So oftentimes when I would walk a skeptical voter through that process of, it was on their ballot. They confirmed it was correct. And what was reported on election night, the risk limiting audit, and then the, the recount were all essentially the same numbers. It helped to give them some confidence. Okay, I may not like, I'm nervous about this new system. I may, I may have preferred a different way of doing it. But it, the importance is that voters are confident that the results are correct. Yep, thank you. Uh, my good friend from the coast, Senator Mallon. Thank you, Mr. Teasley. Uh, just a quick question. What was the rejection rate um, on absentee ballots this year uh, and in comparison to before SB 202 took effect, the rejection rate at the time? I just had a lot of seniors that um, live in high rises that filled out the absentee ballot, but the signature portion was on the top flap of the envelope, and a lot of them forgot to, to sign that. Right. So I don't have a precise number, and so I don't, want to, I don't want to speak out of school here. I'm going to get back to you later today with that number. I, heard, I have heard of no significant increase in, in the rejection rate. I know that while the, the signature is still required on the absentee ballot now, of course, we are verifying by, by driver's license or some other identifying number, but the signature is still required, so it's no longer a signature match, if you will, but we're matching by in most cases driver's license number but i don't know i don't know the specific number and i don't want to i don't want to quote one here but i'll get back to you later today on that thank you other questions uh just for clarification would you would you give us those numbers again on the number of absentee ballots cast during 2022 the number of in-person early voting and then what was the in-person election day voting I'm going to ask you to do the math for the in-person election because okay. I, right. I did not do that. I'll give you, I'll give you, the, I'll give you three numbers, and you can do the math, do the on, math. The, on, the, okay. on the in I went the in to Georgia Tech. I'll figure that out sooner or later. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, you're saying you can't give us a tally on the votes? Yeah. I mean, I could, right. I could pull up my calculator. All right. Absentee ballot. All right. Uh, total votes was 3,962,030. There were 248,281 absentee ballots accepted. And there were 2,289,951 advance in person. So the remaining balance of that. Two million. What was that number again? Two million? Looks like about 1.4 million, um, if I'm doing my math right. Yeah. So, so two, what was the uh, in person early? Two million? Two million, 2,289,951. So uh, people prefer in person early voting. Is that kind of the takeaway? I think so. Yes, sir. And, and I, we, we think it is Georgians typically prefer in-person in voting, voting generally. Right. But, yes, it looks like, yes, over half of the vote this time was in-person early voting. Okay. And, and, it, and it's typically around 50 percent, so this was a little bit of an uptick. Okay. Very good. Any, any further questions for the witness? And maybe, and maybe if I may. Sure. Um, and maybe it's because of improvements like what 
Cobb County piloted where I typically would have been a an in-person on the day of voting, on election day voting, but because the lines were moving so much more quickly in early voting, I availed myself of early voting. Very good. Thank you. Uh, wh one more question, uh, Mr. Mellon. So always uh, asking questions for the folks that are down I-16, um, down in the great state of Chatham. Yeah, uh, the, the independent well, state of Chatham. That's right. That's uh, right. We, we dare to be different. Um, <laughs> when we look at the wait times and everything is you know seems to be piloted in the the north metro area uh, what was are the polls that you talk about with the satisfaction and the ease of voting that did, did all those polls only come from you know fulton and cobb or did you come down i-75 to do some of the polling for folks that are down i-16 well i can tell you that I, I know from personal experience the secretary certainly enjoys your part of the state uh, it is a beautiful part of the state, and so we, we have no interest in excluding anybody in polling or otherwise. So, yes, that was it was conducted all across Georgia. It was not just Metro Atlanta. Thank you, Mr. Teasley. We appreciate your time and your Thank input. You. Uh, I appreciate the Secretary of State's office. And the Thank you very much for the invitation. For all right, we're going to uh, we're going to now get an opportunity to hear from an independent source on uh, election results. We have with us today Dr. Trey Hood. Dr. Hood is professor of political science and director of the Survey for uh, Research at the University of Georgia. He has a bachelor's degree from Texas A&M, a master's from Baylor, and a PhD from Texas Tech. We're grateful for his uh, time today, and he will share with you some information that he has uh, gleaned from research that he's done. Dr. Hood. Thank you. Uh, is, is this on? It should okay. be. Okay. Thank you, Senator Burns, for inviting me to come speak to you all today. Uh, we did conduct a poll following the election in 2022. So this is just a little bit of information about the poll. It was a live interview or telephone survey, which is typically uh, how we conduct polls here in Georgia from our outfit. It was conducted after the election from November 13th through December 6th. There were 1,253 respondents. Uh, I weighted the survey data after the fact by age, sex, race, and education, so it would be representative of the Georgia electorate. So this is a representative statewide poll. Um, so we can make inferences about voting in the state of Georgia from this poll. Making inferences at lower levels of geography can be somewhat dicey. So this is, a, again, a statewide poll. The top line margin of error with, with that many respondents is about plus or minus 2.8 points. And this research was funded by uh, a grant from the MIT Election Data Science Lab. So um, I'm not going to go over everything in the poll, uh, but I'm going to go over some, some highlights in the poll. Uh, in terms of voters and uh, self-reporting issues, uh, did you have any problems? 99% said no, so 1% said yes. So again, most of this is good news for, for our state. Self-reported wait times, 39% of respondents said, so this was, this was for in-person voting either early or on election day, 39% reported no wait time, 36% less than 10 minutes, 21% 20 to 30 minutes, and then 4%. 31 to 60 minutes and just 1% over an hour. So 75% report a wait time of 10 minutes or less. Did you feel safe while casting your ballot at your polling place? 99% said yes, 1% said no. Overall voting experience. So this question asks, at a personal level, how would you rate your overall experience voting in this election? Now, I do have some comparison data from a survey we did back after the election in 2020. So those reporting an excellent uh, experience went from 55% after 2020 to 72%. So again, if you add the excellent and good categories in 2022, you've got 96% reporting an excellent or good experience in the 2022 election. Mm -hmm. So this is a question about voter confidence at the individual level. So this question would ask, how confident are you that your vote in this midterm election was counted as you intended? And again, I have some comparison data here. It's gone up from 2020, from 53% to 64% saying very confident. 
25% compared to 26% saying somewhat confident. So if you add very confident and somewhat confident, those who were confident were uh, comprised about 90% in 2022. Most of these are top lines I'm going to be showing you. Uh, I've got a few comparisons here, though I did break these down by a race of respondent. So again, it's the same question about being confident in, in, in the fact that your vote was counted as you intended. Um, very confident for whites, 63%, for African Americans, 69%, for other minorities, 53%. So it's not much of a racial divide here. Voter confidence at the state level. So this question says now, think about your vote Think about vote counting throughout the state of Georgia, not, not just your own personal situation. How confident are you that votes in Georgia were counted as voters intended? So again, there's some comparison data. It does go up from 37 to 40% saying very confident, and 21 to 37% saying somewhat confident. So that's somewhat or very confident, 77% in 2022. And then again, I've got a, a breakdown here by race. In the very confident category, 39% of whites, 41% of blacks, 35% other minorities. And then in the somewhat confident category, 35% of whites, 39% of blacks, and 37% other minorities. So if you add those two confidence categories together, vary in somewhat, again, 74% for whites and 84, 80%, excuse me, for African Americans. So, Job performance of local election officials. Rate the job performance of your local poll worker. So this, this again shows improvement from 2020 from 40 to 57%. Um, rating their experience is excellent. So if, again, if you add excellent and good, we're going from 81 to 88%, so that there's an increase. And by the way, I was just down I-16 yesterday on Jekyll Island. I was at the meeting of the Georgia Association of Voter Registrars and Election Officials, sharing some of the same information with them. And that's quite a dedicated group of people that deserve our, you know, our, our praise, really, for the job that they do for us in, in, in this state. So little kudos. Kudos to a group that probably doesn't get, get them very often. So. Now here's a question specifically about SB202. Now I didn't want to put a lot of context in this question because I didn't want to prime anyone. So the question, if, if I can read this, just says, last year the Georgia legislature passed an election reform bill known as SB202. In your opinion, so I didn't add any other context, in your opinion, did the recent changes made to Georgia's election laws increase or decrease your confidence in the state's election system? So again, for most people, it increased. There was a substantial proportion, 33%, not surprisingly, who didn't have an opinion. And again, that's not really a surprise. This is a, a very big piece of legislation. And a lot of people, when you're just using that terminology, don't necessarily remember last year. But 43% uh, either greatly or somewhat increased, somewhat or greatly decreased 24% and about a third said that they didn't know. Now here's a question about voting effort. This was for people who had voted both in 2022 and 2020. Comparing your experience voting in the last general election, would you say this time it was easier to cast a ballot, harder to cast a ballot, or would you say there was no difference between these two elections? Only 6% said harder, 15% said easier, 77% said no difference. So 92% said it was no different or easier. And the next three sets of questions ask people if they agreed or disagreed with the following statements. So the statement for this particular question was votes are counted in a timely manner after the election in Georgia. So 82% either strongly or somewhat agreed with that supposition, and there wasn't much disagreement. That, and again, we, we do know, in reality, obviously, that votes were counted in a quicker manner following the 2022 election as compared to the 2020 election. This question asks, uh, do you agree or disagree with the statement, only properly cast ballots are recorded and counted in Georgia elections? So 77% strongly or somewhat agreed with that statement. And then a couple, couple more. 
This statement says, it is easy to cast a ballot in the state of Georgia. Do you agree or disagree with that? 91% either strongly or somewhat agreed with that statement. And then the last question I'll go over, we asked people on a scale of one to 10, with one being not at all satisfied and 10 being extremely satisfied, how would you rate the way the state of Georgia conducts elections? And so you can see how it sort of parses out across that spectrum where, again, it is skewed heavily towards the extremely satisfied side of the, of the distribution there. The, the mean score here was 7.4 on this. Um, now, I didn't give a lot of breakdowns uh, by party or race or age. We gave a few of those. But these generally positive results that we see here are also present across a lot of different demographic categories and a lot of different political categories, including party and ideology. So glad to answer any questions uh, before the committee. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Uh, questions from the committee? I, I provided to the committee the breakdown of the study that was published. So they have the cross tabs, and you can look at all the detail associated with the presentation. But I'd like to recognize the uh, senator from Savannah. Um, same question to you, uh, looking at the, the poll that was conducted, uh, were the majority of voters polled from a metro area, a rural area, um, did the poll reach the folks down I-16 to, to my neck of the woods in comparison to the data collected? You know, where's the largest base of the sample that you have in, in the poll? Well, a good question. It certainly did reach down I-16. Uh, it's, a, it's a representative statewide sample. so. You know, urban areas are going to be more represented in the sample than rural areas, but there are rural voters, suburban voters, urban voters in the sample. So the sample is designed to look like the state as a whole, if that, if that makes sense. And it's difficult to make uh, inferences at levels below the state level because this is a state level poll. Got you. And a, a follow up question would just simply be the poll would only be those folks who actually cast a ballot. So if anyone did face difficulty or hardship, but they didn't cast a ballot because it was one issue or another, they wouldn't even be reflected in the poll. Well, that is that is correct. We were aiming at talking to people who had actually cast a ballot in the election. So there were screening questions to get at that. So that's correct. Thank you. Uh, Madam Leader. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question about the people that you polled. The question was, was voting uh, just as good or just as, no, you ask um, if it was, and they, they answered the same. Was it the same as before? Was it? Was it, uh, what I, was don't that wanna, question? I don't want to interrupt you. Was it harder or easier to cast a ballot? And they yeah. said the same. Most people said the same. Could yes. could that be it was just as hard or it was just as easy? Well, they, they, had the, the same. they had a choice of saying it was harder or easier compared to 2020 or no different. So for most people, the experience was the same as in 2020. Um, but they just said the same. They, they did say Correct. the same. Okay, because so. they could have been, if the same was not a good experience, they didn't have the option to say that. And if the same was a good experience, they still didn't have the option to say that. Well, we didn't ask about their exact experience. Right, back okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Leader. Just for clarification, uh, the, ma the majority of respondents, would you say, had a positive experience in election in 2022? Yes. yes. And, and, and r in relative terms, that that would suggest that it was an improvement over 2020. Is that a fair statement? Well, I do have some comparison data that right. I showed y'all from 2020, and the numbers did tick up from 2020. I, 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 if you would, put the slide back up where you broke down the, the, uh, the data by um, racial demographic so that we can see voter confidence. There you go, by race. Um, how does that compare with your prior experiences? Is that is that well? I don't know if there are prior experiences, but uh, well, we don't have. I don't have a lot of data prior to this. I, I hope this is a project we can keep up in future years. Right, actually, right. So, um. so so right now, what we're seeing is very satisfied 
break that down one more time. Very satisfied or somewhat satisfied? <laughs> well, this is, this is the question about voter confidence. Right. If you're confident that your vote counted as you intended. Right. 63% of whites said very confident, 69% of African Americans, and 53% of other minorities. So African Americans actually have a higher level of voter confidence in the election than non-African Americans? Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? We really appreciate Dr. Hood. And, and one, one just question. Did, did other states do similar studies? Do you know? Did MIT sponsor other studies in other states? Uh, they did. Now, I, I don't know. I can't, uh, I can't speak for what they're doing in other states exactly. But. It would be interesting if you have the data to share how Georgia's experiences compared perhaps to other states' experiences so that we could get a bit of a understanding where that's coming from. Correct. <laughs> You're right. I, we, we appreciate your time and your expertise. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you, Senator Thank Burns. You. We have one bill in front of the committee. Uh, it should go relatively quickly. Senator Williams, if you would present. Yeah, go, to the table. go to the table just so that we'll, need a, we'll do the formal stuff. So this is Senate Bill 129. We're working off of LC 472066. Senator Williams on the 25th. members of the committee this is a very simple bill and how many times have we heard that um, but this ma'am a whole bunch <laughs> but this one is in code now that employers can give their employees up to two hours off non-paid leave of course to allow them to go vote all this bill does it says they can vote either on one of the days that are designated for advanced in-person voting or on the day which such primary or election is held. So it just expands it from the day of election to early voting, which early voting, I was chief registrar in Baldwin County for 16 years. Early voting was our largest precinct more people voted early than they did on election day. So um, this, this just makes it easier to vote. As Georgia has been, easier to vote, harder to cheat. That's what we want. Thank you, Senator. Uh, questions from the committee? Senator from uh, Columbus. Um, what time did, did they're in Baldwin County, what time did the early voting precinct open? The early voting precinct opened at 8 o'clock. Okay. And closed at? At 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. We did, if, if I could elaborate on that, please. When early voting first started, it was for 45 days. And we actually felt like, okay, let's extend the hours to 6.30. So we were open from 8 o'clock in the morning to 6.30 in the evening. From 5 o'clock to 6.30, that whole 45 days, we probably voted two people, three people. Nobody came. So then, of course, the time limit was shortened after a couple of election cycles back down to 21 days. But still, we never had anyone show up later or to even bring to our attention that they were not able to vote because they couldn't get there because we did actually institute the 5 to 6.30 an hour, hour and a half extra. But nobody showed up. But we did have Saturday voting and people really enjoyed that and that we had a good turnout on Saturday. So-so, but usually Monday through Friday was about a turnout. In, just to elaborate, in Columbus, I know that the, the early voting polls are the same hours as the day of election, which are 7 to 7. seven, to seven. Mm -hmm. and, and we have had a very uh, robust Saturday voting, especially in this last election. So I was, I was just curious if the times were uniform or if it's the registrar based on do you know that if it's if it's based on what the registrar feels or the or the best hours as long as or I'm, is it is I'm it, not sure yeah. possibly Mr. Teasley could answer that yeah I, I believe just a point of clarification uh, Mr. Teasley it, currently in law uh, early voting hours are 
established by a local board, but they have to be between eight and five, and they can't extend beyond that. Is that they correct? They can extend, yes, sir. Um, but I believe it's a, is a minimum of nine to five, or is it eight to five? But I, they can not extend up until seven. Thank you. And they can be early if they choose to. Yes, earlier and late. Thank you. Uh, Madam Leader. I don't have a question. I was thought when I read the bill on line 19, it looks like it needs a word added. 19. Uh, that says the employer may specify the hours during which the employee may be absent himself or herself. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. What that means is the employer. No, no, no. no the, insert the word B. Is insert that the word B. So a Scribner's error on line 19. I, I'm not sure that that is. Is, is, that, is, is it that a Scribner's error? Absent himself. Ah, may may absent himself. Or I think you're. Absent you're, himself or herself is. Would, I, be, that would be correct. Would be the correct. English. Be the correct. That's correct. not incorrect English. <laughs> <laughs> that is terrible. I'm an engineer. I, I don't know. It's Harris County English. <laughs> Harris County English. <laughs> Nobody talks like that though. <laughs> may absent him or herself. Uh, attorneys, attorneys apparently <laughs> speak speak the, this version, this field, right, and uh, and funeral directors. There you go. Uh, but uh, I believe we're we're good the way it's. Uh, I'll defer to ledge council. The way it's currently worded is correct. Is that correct? That's the current wording that's been on the books. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Uh, just for uh, uh, it, 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 are, is that all, man? That's all. Okay. I think uh, th just for the committee and most of the committee is aware of this. This legislation was part of a of a component uh, in prior legislation. Last session, uh, House Bill 1464 had this as a part of its language. Uh, it never uh, completed the process, and we we thought that it was worthy of moving forward this session. I appreciate Senator Williams carrying it forward. Any further questions? Uh, we have one witness who wishes to uh, speak to the measure. Chair recognizes Cin Cindy Battles, Cynthia Battles. Thank you, uh, Mr. Williams, Senator Can Williams. Can you me here? You, no, you're good. I think the committee's comfortable with your presentation. Just in case you ask, I brought a hard copy. Okay. Sorry, okay. Vice Chair likes to ask me if I've read the Bible, okay. so I brought my you copy brought it. today. You brought it for me. My name is Cindy Battles. I'm the policy director for the People's Agenda. Um, first of all, to the measure, we actually support the bill. We like it. I really, really hope that it doesn't get included in an omnibus bill that I have to spend the rest of the energy I have left fighting. Um, to answer Representative Mallow's question, the increased absentee rejection rate from 2020 to 2022 was about three times the amount of reject, we saw ab absentee ballots inc rejection increase three times from 2020 to 2022, mostly because of the timeline. I'm not, and sure, it, I'm not sure that is germane to this legislation. I think okay. that's an interesting point. Um, now, you're welcome to share that with the uh, With your permission, Chair, I'd like to address some of the issues that we have, not not necessarily with the legislation, not, but this I, Not at this time. Okay. We, we're only addressing this legislation because we're on a tight timeline. So you're welcome I, to come back next week. Okay, so next week, I can speak on the well, issues it all of the depends polling? on whether it's germane to the legislation <laughs> next week. This is not a hearing. I completely this is not a hearing. I understand, sir, but I do want to say on the record that the polling is deeply flawed. I appreciate your input. Thank you very much. Thank you. All Thank right. You. Um, You're very welcome, Leader Bell. The chair will entertain a motion on SB 129. What's the pleasure? I move to pass. I have a motion from Senator Mallow. Do pass. Is there a second? Need a second? Second from uh, Senator Jones. All those in favor, the uplifted hand. Congratulations, Senator Williams. We appreciate your work. One opposed. One opposed. All right, so uh, uh, that duty is duly noted. Senator Robertson opposes. Thank you. All right, there's, uh, uh, there's one piece of information I'd like to clarify. I, I failed to introduce the most important people in the room. That's our staff. Let me introduce uh, Tarika Jackson. Ms. Jackson is our administrative assistant, supports the committee. Uh, we have Mr. Nathan Corbett from uh, Senate uh, Research and Mr. Stu Morelli from Ledge Council. And we have our intern, Sophie. Where are you, Sophie? Opalak. She's not in the room right now. And uh, we appreciate, there she is. We appreciate the support from, uh, from Senate Press and the technology. 
Thank you for your time this morning. We will have a meeting next Thursday. What day is that? The 20 whatever. Uh, whatever. The 20 whatever. Uh, it'll, it'll be in this room at, at, at 8 o'clock or perhaps slightly earlier depending on the agenda. Thank you for your time. The uh, meeting's adjourned.